Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Chairwoman Delaro, Ranking Member Cole, members of the committee, uh, thank you for hosting today's hearing and giving me the opportunity to discuss uh, perhaps the most important issue uh, to me um, for this year's fiscal 2020 appropriations. On September 15th of 2016, at the age of seven, Philomena Bean Stentardo was diagnosed with DIPG. DIPG is one of the most devastating cancers with a 0% survival rate and a median survival of nine months from diagnosis. Bean was an exceptional athlete and mastered every sport she participated in. Like most of us at the age of seven, she was full of energy, loved playing with friends and family, and perhaps unlike some of us at age seven, she loved going to school. Just 10 months after her diagnosis on July 23rd, 2017, Bean lost her battle with the IPG. She was eight years old. The research of the National Institutes of Health, a collection of America's preeminent medical research centers is critical and plays a critical part in meeting the healthcare challenges, strengthening our economy, inspiring the next generation of scientists, and maintaining our nation's leadership in innovation. NIH has provided funding and support for some of the world's best and most important medical research. The NIH has, since its beginning, been the best hope for finding cures, improving treatments, and gaining better understanding of diseases and conditions that affect millions of Americans. I encourage the committee to double the amount of funding for cancer research at the NIH, but to reach a minimum of $10 billion in fiscal year 2020 for the National Cancer Institute with a significant percentage of those funds focused on pediatric cancers and specifically to research for an effective treatment and cure for DIPG. I'm also encouraging the committee to increase funding to the Pediatric Brain Tumor Consortium and specifically a 25% increase in funding aimed at cancer strategies through pediatric brain tumor research. Investing in research for a cure for cancers like DIPG will lead to curing other pediatric brain cancers and eventually nearly all cancers. As the committee looks for ways to increase the speed of research, especially with respect to data sharing, I encourage you to look uh, to organizations which have already developed systems and methods which can expand the scale accordingly. For example, in 2011, uh, uh, in 2011 um, I'm sorry, in 2011 organizations, uh, researchers have identified a need to better understand DIPG and other brain cancers. Frustrated by a lack of information and collaboration, they started a partnership which now consists of 110 institutions in 14 countries and over 80 foundations and chapters representing hundreds of patient families working together to share data. Out of a patient diagnosis rate of approximately 250 per year, this partnership is already sharing 1,400 patient data sets. Before the DIPG registry, the largest sampling was around 70 patient data sets. With data sharing comes the need to protect patient privacy and standards for uniform collection. There should be a standard process for collecting and inputting data in order to protect the integrity of research and increase the speed and effectiveness of cancer research. It is also important that we avoid duplication and that we are using every taxpayer dollar wisely. And if a successful registry already exists, any taxpayer dollars going towards data sharing should bolster the registry and use it for other cancers. By using the best existing models, we can promote collaboration and potentially save more lives. The fight against cancer is one that transcends politics. By working together, we can pass common sense bills that increase the quality of life and care for patients and ultimately put an end to this awful disease. And as a co-chair of the Cancer Caucus, uh, I'm committed to finding and implementing solutions with this committee, which will help us find treatments and ultimately cures for cancers of all type, types. Um, Madam Chair, uh, cancer is a, a, an illness that affects uh, uh, one in three of us in our lives and will kill one in four of us. Uh, perhaps the worst form of cancer uh, is pediatric cancer. We have no greater responsibility as elected officials and as human beings than to protect our kids. So pediatric brain uh, cancer research and pediatric cancer research, I ask be a top priority in this year's funding budget. Thank you very, very much for your testimony. I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm a cancer survivor, ovarian cancer. 15,000 women die every year from ovarian cancer. I was spared biomedical research and the grace of God, which I said earlier today with regard to this. So I know what a cancer diagnosis is, and I know what a cancer diagnosis is with regard to children. 
and the heartbreak of witnessing um, the treatment uh, and potentially the death of a child, a seven-year-old who has nothing but to look forward to his life ahead and growing up. What we did last year is we put report language uh, into the Labor H Bill. We did that on a bipartisan basis because it says, after accidents, cancer is the second leading cause of death in children ages 1 through 14. 2018, cancer affected 15,000 children and adolescents. Most of the diagnosis will be for rare forms which lack therapeutic options. It, it goes on, but it urges the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the committee uh, and encourages the NIH to move in this uh, direction, um, and which we support. But I, I, I want to tell you that the NCI and this current budget has been cut by about $900 million. That is, in my view, outrageous. The NIH in the budget is $5.2 billion in a cut. We all have to address that. I don't care what side of the aisle that we come from uh, because every family has had to face cancer in some way in this nation. And your emphasis on pediatric cancer um, is supported, and it's supported here. Um, but what we need to do is to make sure that we do have the resources in order to address this. One of the issues, and NCI, I believe, will be here. Is NCI here next week when we have the NIH that will come forward? And we will pursue the questions as to the commitment to rare cancers, to pediatric cancer, um, which has in the past been not um, uh, focused on in the way that others have. Uh, we can promise you that, but we also have to address the concern that um, we fund the NIH. We have increased funding for the NIH $9 billion in a bipartisan way over the last several years. Um, and uh, with your help and the help of others, you have the, the caucus, um, that uh, what we need to do is to uh, uh, mitigate against uh, those who would want to cut back uh, from the NCI uh, and the, uh, the NIH uh, uh, and look to the areas which have not been focused on um, in terms of research uh, for, the, uh, for the future because these children are our future and it's our job to make sure uh, that we give them, that we give them the chance. I've been given a second chance at life. These children need a second chance at life. And we have the capacity to do that in this institution and in this subcommittee. So thank you so much for what you are doing and for bringing this to uh, our attention. And uh, I look forward to working with you. I thank, uh, thank the chair very much. And I thank my friend for being here. Um, made the point earlier, it's been interesting to me to watch how bipartisan and how across the political spectrum the advocacy for the NIH has been. My friends have been an advocate and supporter ever since he got here. And uh, it does matter that we have voices and votes beyond this committee that actually move that. My friend's not, again, only been a voice. He's been consistently a vote to actually move this uh, type of legislation forward. That's not always an easy thing to do. Uh, but you've been there every time, and uh, I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, this, uh, again, is an area of bipartisan concern and bicameral concern. I'm sure we'll have support from our friends in the other chamber, Republican and Democrat alike. Uh, and uh, this is one where, uh, again, I think it's very helpful for you to come here and lay down a marker. And, again, since we're in the same co uh, conference, I know how often you get up and lay down the same marker. Uh, to our colleagues, so it's uh, and and uh, where you've been on the floor and where the votes have been. So I I thank you for your advocacy. It's interesting to me, Madam Chair. You know, one of the things actually even before this committee moved, um, a very divided Congress. I watch us uh, take away money that we used to spend on political conventions, uh, taxpayer dollars, and redirect that uh, toward the Gabrielle Miller Kids First Research Fund. 
a number of years ago. And it was actually, uh, uh, I, I'd had legislation to do that for years, having been a, a, uh, a chief of staff to the Republican National Committee during convention year, and all of a sudden getting a check from the federal government. I remember looking, what do we need this for? I mean, we really can raise the money to fund our own conventions. Uh, and uh, it was actually Eric Can. I had billed to just return it to the Treasury, and Eric Cantor called me and said, do you want to save that money, Cole, or do you want to spend it on something that matters? And uh, I said, it was our colleague Greg Harper that uh, had a bill but was looking for a means to fund it, and that's what we used to fund it and passed through here overwhelmingly because, again, uh, concerns about the issues that you're bringing forward transcend uh, the normal political lines, and uh, they're, they're where we're at our best, frankly, as a Congress and uh, as a people. Uh, we've been very blessed in this country, and, frankly, we can do some things that obviously they help our own, own folks, but they help people all over the world. It's not like we... Uh, uh, you know, cancer stops uh, at the borders of the United States. It's not like cures stop there either. So we're able to do some things, and we should take advantage of the unique blessings that we have uh, and be a leader here. Uh, interesting to me, I mean, cancer is something we, you, we all uh, have got some sort of personal experience with. I mean, I don't know a family that's not, that hadn't been touched by it. I mean, your friends have it. Um, and, you know, 1.6 million Americans contract it every year. We lose about 600,000 people every year. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, thanks in part to this committee and brilliant researchers, 65% uh, of the people that contract it now survive it. And uh, like my good friend, the chair. Uh, so we know this money's been well spent. It's made a difference in the lives of millions and millions of Americans. So, again, I look forward to working with the chair on this issue uh, and, uh, you know, applaud her efforts. She's been invaluable. Uh, and moving this ball forward throughout her career, and certainly in the last four years as ranking member, and I know she'll continue to be effective as chairman, more effective, I suspect. Uh, so I, I'm looking forward to be uh, being her working partner in that endeavor, and we thank you very much uh, for coming and, and advocating on this important cause. So I want to thank the chairwoman and the ranking member, not only for your time, but for your compassion. And uh, Chairwoman Delara is a survivor. Uh, I know these kids and their family members, they're in good hands. Um, so uh, just remember, we have to be their voice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very, very much. Appreciate it. You are their voice as well. Thank you.